Howdy, howdy, howdy. Welcome back to this, uh, hopefully, third and final part of uh, replacing the hot end on the Neptune 4 Max. Today, we're going to put a spool of filament in, do a PID tuning, and do a test print. So first, we'll start off. We'll go ahead and uh, we'll do the PID tuning. So we'll go to the settings, advanced settings, nozzle PID, and style like to print. On the warmer side, we'll just start with 220. Let's click start detection. It is going to ramp up the fans a little bit. So let's see if we can turn that down some on the mic. How is the audio right now? We good? The fan's too loud on the uh, printer. Go back to the overhead. See exactly what is going on. Okay. Currently, the printer is just uh, heating up the nozzle. It's going through some cycles of getting it up the temp, dropping the temp back down, it's just going back and forth a few times. Let's see. While it's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and open up this uh, spool of filament so we can get that in there. Okay. And as you can tell, The PID tuning has completed. So we'll put the uh, spool of filament up on my not so modified uh, spool holder for the Neptune 4 Max. Run it through the filament runout detector, well detection. Cut a little more off. Put it to the top of the hot end. Make sure you push the lever down when you go, when you put the filament in to where it bottoms out. Then you can let the lever sit. Okay. Let's do overhead. Now we're going to make sure, since we changed the uh, hot end, we're going to relevel it. So now it's going to zero out the printer and start the leveling process. Instead of using a piece of paper or the uh, leveling card, I actually have uh, shims that I use, little metal shims. And this one is 0.1 millimeter, which so far with every printer that I've used it on has gotten me really, really close to where you want a printer to be. Once the printer gets uh, its home coordinates, we're back here at the main menu. And now we have to hit auxiliary, hit confirm. I'm gonna start off with hitting home. And then as you can see, there are four, uh, six coordinates. Those line up to the uh, wheels under the plate. That's the nozzle you click let's say you click on one it'll go to where that not the um sc ah the screws at, and then you just slide the uh, metal shim back and forth until it starts to barely grab that's usually what i like to do 
If you go too much further, then you've come across the uh, times where your nozzle could dig into the hot end and it just makes for leveling a pain in the butt. Okay, so. Remember, with this, if you go righty-tighty, it pulls the bed down. Lefty-loosey, pushes the bed up. Okay. Now what you're gonna notice is I'm gonna go around the printer probably two or three times leveling it out just to make sure as we go through and level all six coordinates that they are consistent after the first two, after the first time, then the third, uh, second time, just to make sure we give this bed every chance it has to get a level playing field. Because with it being a 420 by 420 build plate, it is actually a pain in the butt to level. Okay. So it looks like we got a little bit of a crowd tonight. How's everyone doing tonight? It's good to hear. I'm gonna jump around to the other side of the table here so I can get a hold of the other screws to level the bed. I know the angles are gonna be hard to see with this right now to bear with me on it it's not really the easiest process to get on camera and one trick that if you're uh, if you bottom out the uh, screw just go to the other screws throughout that side and if you tighten them up or loosen them it'll also pull whichever corresponding one you're working on in the same direction. Okay. Got to do five. It's so like combination between the new hot end and the bed. This bed is pretty warped, which isn't surprising because the bed is, as I said earlier, it is one of the larger uh, beds out of uh, 3D printers. There are some bigger than it, obviously, but for normal, use case this is going to be one of the biggest printers most people are going to want to use okay uh, right now just hoping to get this printer up and running that way we can get it back in the rotation possibly work on the uh, other elegoo uh, neptune 4 max and then uh here in the uh, future get the uh, Voron Trident out here 
finish that build, do the uh, Voron uh, 0 0.1, finish that build out. And then after that, we will start the uh, Iron Man armor build. Jump back over real fast. If I don't have to make any real major adjustments on this pass, we should be good to start the uh, test print. Wrong way. Okay. I would say for the most part that bed is as level as it's going to be for the uh, bed size. Uh, currently I have uh, Inland's, uh, I think it's PLA Pro. It's a uh, Micro Center brand. Let's see. Nope, just PLA Plus. But it is the Inland brand that you can get at Micro Center. This was out of the uh, Micro Center had it on sale, so that is what we're going to use to test out this printer to make sure everything's good. So what I did here, after I did the manual bed leveling, it is now going through and it's actually going to do the automated version, where it's got um, was it 36 touch points throughout the entire bed, and it's going to uh, give a all basically a bed mesh inside of clipper which is what the printer runs to uh, communicate with uh, all the motors the hot end the motherboard touch screen gives you a nice fancy little gui also uh, let's see currently right now we are just waiting on the bed to heat up it currently puts the nozzle at 140 and the bed at 60 and then once it does that it will kick over and start the bed leveling process let's see Uh, depending on what temp you set the bed to, this bed usually takes, uh, on average, I would say maybe five, 10 minutes, just depends on the elements of the room. If it's warm already in the room, it'll take the bed uh, less time to heat up. If it's cold, it'll obviously take longer. 
Uh, essentially, it is a big uh, all heat plate underneath heating up the aluminum plate, which then transfers to the magnetic sticker, which then transfers to the build plate, which is a flexible, um, I believe this is a flexible PEI spring steel sheet. That leaves a little texture on the bottom of your prints. If you lay them face, if you lay them actually flat on the build plate when you're slicing them. Let's see. Yeah, it's currently at 39 Celsius or well, 40 Celsius. So it's only got 20 more Celsius to go. Let's see. Oh, and what we're gonna do for the test print is a 3D Benchy, which j it's just your, your basic uh, test to make sure you have proper cooling, your printer has uh, proper extrusion, extrusion for filament, and it's just your all around basic test to make sure everything on the printer runs. Well, a lot of people you see on the internet, they'll actually do speed benches just to see how fast they can push their printer to uh, see if they can make a, the leaderboard per se of who's got the fastest benchy for their printer. Um, I think the goal is to do Sunday night Monday night and Wednesday nights. Just depends on the uh, workload that I've got coming up with the uh, printer builds and how fast we can get through them. The uh, two Voron builds, those will actually go, those will actually take a little bit of time, so she'll be able to stick with that for at least the next month or so. But then when it comes to the uh, Iron Man builds, it's going to be a lot of uh, kind of a print and chill type situation where I'll have the print, I'll have one of the either one of the Elegoos up here or one of my other printers, and we'll let it print. I'll have the overhead cam actually pointed at it, or I'll use the uh, onboard camera, and that'll be one of the views along with the overhead and the main cam, and then we'll just sit here and talk and if it takes longer than you know let's say two hours we'll call the stream and let the printer keep going and kick back to it the uh during the next stream okay we're at uh 54 celsius now it's almost there this is the downside of having a very large build plate it takes forever to heat up Actually, see if I can get the uh, overhead cam down a little lower, which will put it in the shot of the main cam. But for what we're doing, it should be fine. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, it's in there a little bit, but we should be good. Oh yeah, I think it's a little bit better view. Let's see.
There we go. Now it's a little closer to the actual printer, which we should see the uh, hot end move here in a second to start the uh, 36 point uh, calibration of the bed. Oh yeah, 60C is getting hot. Um, it actually started, uh, my dad got me into it inadvertently. A couple years back, he had a, uh, a Prusa MK3S sitting at their house. I saw it and it had collected dust for probably six months to a year. And I told him, hey, I'm going to take it over to my house and I'm going to put it together and get it working for you. And that adventure right there became a hobby that's now kind of become a passion of mine. As you can tell now, the, uh, the printer is uh, doing a homing again. It's where it's just getting, a, it's getting an initial all zero and now it's going to go through and start doing the uh, 36 points let's see now how it's able to read it there is actually a inductive uh, sensor on the back of the uh, hot end that reads how far away the uh, all the bed is from the sensor and here in a second once this is done I will flip it up back to the overhead and you will see all of the uh, deviations on the bed of how each point correlated with what it thought was zero. It's, a, it's halfway done now. So it should take about another minute at most. And then we could do the Z offset. Which Z offset is just setting the disc between the nozzle and the bed manually. We'll once again be using the shim and slowly just getting it to that right to where you can feel the nozzle start to hit the shim once it's there. We'll save it. It should restart the printer. And then we can get started on actually printing the uh, test print for the Benchy. Let's see. It is just about to finish up. Once the Halden gets all the way back to the, the back here, it will be done. Okay. As you can tell, it's moving back to the home position. Flip this back to the overhead. And it is telling, is giving you instructions on how to do the Z offset. All we're going to do is hit confirm. And then you see all these lovely numbers down here. That is each point that it just calculated. So right here where it says in the middle, Z offset, it's got the negative uh, 0.950. That is what it was before with the old original hot end. Now we got a new one, so we're gonna have to readjust. We're gonna have to adjust that. If you hit the up arrow, it goes the nozzle goes up, down, goes down. You got uh, three different all steps you can do: a 0 0.01, a 0 0.1, and a one millimeter. Okay. 
Oh, right now that is totally smacking the bed. So. Gonna do a point one. Get it to where the shim does is able to move freely. Now we're going to bring it back down. I moved it down to a point zero one. And now we're just going to keep going down until it starts to hit. Getting a little grinding right there, so it's close. Okay. Bed is leveled. We are now going to save it. Which will flip back to the dual screen, or dual view. It is currently saving the, the uh, configuration. This part always takes a few seconds. Okay. We are now back to the uh, main screen on the controller. We're gonna take our USB. This happens to be a Micro Center USB flash drive. Plug it in. We're gonna go to print. Sometimes it detects it right off the bat, sometimes it doesn't. Let's go in or well, out back in. There it goes. It now shows up the Benchy. We're going to click on the only .g code that's in there. And it says 29 minutes. We're going to hit confirm to start the print. It's now stating that it is preparing the printer. Let's see. Going to have to pay attention when I... Uh, Use a display with the overhead cam to actually move it over it properly. Currently what's going on is the uh, nozzles heating up to 140 again and the bed is heating up to 65C. I've noticed that heating the bed up to 65C on these Neptune 4 Maxes actually helps with um, bed adhesion on that first layer. It doesn't matter what filament I've used. I usually put the bed hotter than what you would normally set the max temp to on the beds. Um, once it gets up to temp, it's going to do that 36 point calibration again. And then it's going to send the, it's going to raise the hot ends uh, temperature up to printing temp. We'll do a purge line and then we will start the print. The goal with this tonight on the test print is not to have the, I wouldn't say the most accurate Benji. It's more to make sure we've got the nozzle working and the first layer. So bed level. So once this gets two more degrees on the bed, it will start that process. I have actually got this big um, auxiliary fan turned off because when it kicks on, it actually has two big fans on the back and it sounds like a small jet engine. So for the sake of everyone's ears, I do not have that currently on. Let's see. Okay. Looks like it's gonna start the uh, calibration here in a second. Let's see. Okay, that's got a good view there. Okay. Oh. Oh, I updated the config on this. So it doesn't do the 36 point calibration. Once it does this homing, it 
we'll put the hot end at the rest position and start the purge line. Okay, looks like the purge line was successful. So we're good there. It will go through and start the benching now. So while this is printing, does anyone have any questions right now? Looks like we're good on the first layer. Let's see. Ah, yeah, I can't tell from the, uh, the actual display on this screen, but if I pulled up the uh, web console, we can see what layer it's on to determine what's going on. Yep, looks like we just hit layer two. So the fan, the, uh, Hot end part cooling fan kick. Well, the uh, yeah, the part cooling fan kicked on. So now the printer's gonna actually go a little bit faster. Uh, it is actually called a 3D benchy. It's just a benchmarking tool that we use in the 3D printing industry to test out your printer to make sure everything's running right, make sure you got adequate cooling, and then some of, some people actually do it for speed to see how fast they can print one to push their printers to the max test out new uh, nozzles and hot ends and different ways of um, cooling the part as it comes out of the uh, hot end. Let's see, two minutes. So let's try this. Support. As you can tell, the printer just kicked into another gear. I changed the uh, print speed up to sport mode, which tells the printer to go a little bit faster. Let's see. Oh, don't want the uh, overhead. What's nice about this printer is it actually has an LED strip up at the top of it to where you can turn on a uh, LED strip and you can actually see your print job. Makes it easier if it's in a uh, dark room to where you don't actually have lights on like we do currently right now. Um, there we go. And then there is a nozzle um, LED. I haven't actually had much use for it. You can't really even... I would say see it on stream, but because of uh, how I've got the overlay currently, the nozzle is currently being blocked. So we're gonna scoot this back a little, Let's see how it looks. Oh, gotta go the other way. There we go. Here in a second, yep. You can see the light, but it doesn't really do much. Even when you're looking at it, you get a little bit of a view, but nice and nice in practice, but in actual use, there's no real purpose for it. Let's see.
so far it looks like it's doing a pretty good job. I actually used uh, Cura, the oh, well, the latest version of Cura that has a profile for the uh, Neptune 4 Max with the 0.4 millimeter nozzle and just left everything default and told it to print in extra draft mode. So it's actually, the printer is actually being pushed a little bit speed wise, nothing too crazy. If I recall this printer can print up to 500 millimeters a second, which currently it's at 300 millimeters a second. So it's not really being pushed too hard on this print. Um, depending on the printer, it could take anywhere from 20 minutes to, um, what is it on a Prusa MK3 S it's like an hour and 15 minutes on state, uh, standard settings, just regular defaults. I think this one was defaulted at 49 minutes. But then I set the uh, print quality to extra draft, which sped it up. Currently, the device or the uh, display says 26 minutes remaining. But one thing I've noticed with the uh, Elegoo uh, fork of Clipper is their print times aren't actually that close to being accurate from what it says on the display because it's already dropped two minutes now. It says, it now says 25 minutes. And I would say we're almost halfway done with the print now. So this should be a relatively short, I would short ish stream. I would say I'd be done. We should be done within 20 minutes at the most. Uh, more than likely, I'll probably stay on. I'll still have the stream going until this print's done, just so we could show the final result on camera. That way everyone can see it. Um, but if it's a bigger if it's a bigger print job that takes majority of the bed, let's say next on Sunday, we have a print job and it says it's going to take four hours. You know, we may sit here and talk for the majority of the stream, answer any questions anyone has. And, you know, I may, I may pull another printer out, start messing with that on stream just to keep everyone engaged. Yeah. Cause this, this bench is going rather quick. So, I mean, only if, it shouldn't take too much more time. Yeah. It's already dropped. It's already dropped down to, uh, 21 minutes now. So we're moving along. But so I do apologize if the overhead camera is shaking quite a bit since this is a bed slinger. It is a uh, since the bed is moving kind of quickly, the uh, overhead cam is only on a single pole system. So every time the table shakes, it's going to shake the top camera. It doesn't like it's very shaky on my side, but you guys have to let me know on that. I may have to make some adjustments, adjustments for next stream. We'll just play it by ear. that break this down some more
what I'm currently doing is I'm, I'm trying to change the angle of the overhead cam. That way we can get at least a shot of the Benchy printing. That way it doesn't seem like it is a talking head camera uh, view the whole time. Let's see. What do we got there? There we go. That's getting better. Drop that down. Ow. Now, if you're not used to a print bed, 65C is quite warm. Now we can all kind of see the benchy for the most part. Yes, the, uh, the hot end is kind of covering it up, but we do have a little bit of a view, so that makes it nice for everyone to see. Also, don't forget to like the stream and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, make sure you turn notifications to the all if you want to if you want to see them. If not, you you guys won't get notifications when we do either shorts or videos or live streams in the future. So, if you have it set to all, you'll at least get the notification. Loosen this up a little. Should be able to adjust the ball joint. Ooh. There we go. Now you guys can see more of the print than I can. Currently it's stating there's roughly 11 minutes left. So we'll see how accurate that really is.
Now I did have a request from one of the uh, other live streams earlier uh, in the week from a comment after the stream asking if I was going to put linear rails on this printer. Uh, the goal eventually is to put linear rails on this one and the other Neptune 4 Max. That way I can get rid of the, uh, get away from the wheels on the printer and it just makes for a smoother, easier printer compared to the wheels which become consumables and with linear rails. You don't really have, the only upkeep you have to worry about is making sure they stayed oiled compared to you will notice the wheels will start breaking down, especially on this printer and the uh, other Neptune 4 Max. It'll actually start leaving what I want to say little fuzzies of broken down uh, rubber wheels throughout the printer. It's kind of a pain to clean up at times because if you take a paper towel and isopropylene, you gotta make sure that you don't get it on the uh, on the belt because you might dry the belt out. And if you get it on the print bed, then you gotta clean the whole print bed. And it's just a pain in the butt. Uh-oh. Well. The Y stepper motor just freaked out. That makes this interesting. Go ahead and restart that. The fun part about 3D printing. There's no rhyme, no reason. Prints may just fail because they fail. Yep. Well, what I'm gonna do right now is we're going to move the hot end up. Well, not the hot end, the 
entire Z axis. We'll pop this off of the bed. Looks like the brim didn't have good uh, layer adhesion, which is fine, but if you look at what was actually printed for the Benchy, it's not perfect. That could be, that could be um, the filament since I did get the uh, bargain bin filament at Micro Center. Uh, the printer just decided it didn't want to print anymore. So I'm going to have to look into that later. Come on, focus. There we go. The uh, first layer, it's not bad. Looks like it needs to, looks like we need to bump up the uh, flow a little bit to compensate. Um, yeah, it looks like it's just flow issues right here. That's what the, um, there we go. The bubbles are right here. This is actually the same inside the boat. Let's see. Doesn't look bad at all. Cooling. I mean, I kind of hose myself on the cooling because I didn't have the big auxiliary fan turned on. So it's not as good as it could be. But yeah, I think we're gonna call we're gonna call it there tonight on the stream. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Support all your guys' support is appreciated. And I will see all of you Sunday for the next stream. We should be working on uh, getting the Voron Trident out here. The frame has already been done. We'll be basically putting the bed on and doing wiring. So I will see all of you.